They say that true beauty lays in the eyes of the beholder. And with that said, behold this beauty, the Husqvarna Fit Pillin. Now let's get one thing straight out of the way. In theory, this is a KTM RC250 in a prettier birthday suit, a shorter tail and uh, no fairing. But let me just tell you why this is so much more than that. The Vidpillin 250 and the Swartpillin 250 are the two bikes Husqvarna have on offer in India. Both the bikes are pretty much the same apart from the clip-on handlebars and road tyres on the Cafe Racer, the Vidpillin, is replaced with more upright handlebars and dual sport tyres on the Scrambler, the Swartpillin. When it comes to design, the Vidpillin is an absolute stunner. It's so achingly pretty that it's pretty much guaranteed that wherever you go, you're going to be asked about it. Our team has been riding the Swart Pillin and the Vid Pillin for around four days. And wherever we go, we are stopped to ask what it is, where it's from, and when has it been out. To be honest, you don't see many of these yet. However, they are really head turners. It's 1.8 lakhs X showroom, but when you tell people that, they expect it to be two, three times more expensive than that, which is a good thing for the Vid Pillin. At first glance, the Vid Pillin does seem like quite a small bike. But once you get your bum on the saddle, you do realize how light of a bike this is. 151 kgs. That's like 15 kgs lighter than the Duke 250. However, there is a drawback which is the seat height. The seat height is like an ADV competitive 843mm. So if you are anywhere below 5'7", I'm pretty sure you're going to have quite a lot of trouble on it. The bronze fuel filler cap with the Husqvarna logo on it, the yellow stitching on the seats, the single pod LCD cluster and the round headlamps with integrated DRLs make this cafe racer look like it come from the future rather than from the past. I personally think that the styling alone is going to seal the deal for most buyers. Although there is a penalty to have such aggressive styling, you leave very little room to tuck away those cables neatly. And that means that there is quite a bit of a mess down there below the body parts. And uh, apart from that, there is no other bad part of appearance in this bike. The 250 Duke's 249cc liquid-cooled single and the same gearing gels with the fun and playful nature of the Huskies. This engine is eager to rev, with the meat of the power band sitting at the mid and top end of the range, which means that it only begins to come alive post 4000 rpm with a notable surge after 7500 rpm and all the way to the limiter. Personally, I don't mind this as I like engines that rev with a sense of urgency and working the gearbox keeps you engaged while riding the motorcycle. On the flip side, the weak bottom end will require more gear shifts while riding at low speeds but that's hardly an issue as the 6-speed gearbox is smooth to operate. When it comes to maneuverability, you might think that the wheelbase might be a little shorter than the Duke 250 because it seems like it. However, it's not the case, it's the same. And uh, while you turn in traffic, you really need to twist and turn and sometimes you do need a little bit more. You're gonna have to see yourself reversing a little bit to take a U-turn and maneuverability is seven out of 10, yeah, maybe being optimistic. One thing you're gonna have to learn to live with is this inherent buzzy nature of this engine. Something that can be felt in the seats, bars and pegs. The Vidpillin's rigidly mounted clip-ons transmit all the sensation to your hands. In fact, sustained high-speed rides on the cafe racer will leave you with a tingling sensation in your palm. But it's not to the point of it being prohibitively bothersome. You could, at a stretch, pass that off as a characterful trait about the Vidpillin, especially when you discover the way it handles around the corners. The white arrow is set on the stiffer side. The WP upside down forks in the front and monoshock at the rear do let the rider know what's happening underneath. Traffic is where you feel that the Vidpillin needs a bit more space when it comes around moving other stationary bikes or cars in traffic. What I really didn't enjoy doing with the bike was reaching its top speed. 
On the speedo, it nudged around 138 km an hour, plus the effort to reach there was un-KTM like. There were also vibrations that crept in post the ton. The motorcycle is happy cruising at 90-100 km an hour, the sweet spot as some of you like to call it. The stability too is good, but above 100 km an hour, the vibrations and the front weaving takes away some of the confidence from the rider. Many are smitten by this delicious looking bike and I wouldn't blame them. Take a spin on it and the clamoring only grows. However, I wouldn't suggest you to keep this as your only bike in your household. You should keep this as your second or third bike. And the regular Activa should be used for your regular chores. If you use this for your chores, you're going to come back with a broken back. At 1.85 lakhs X showroom, it's a smidge under the Duke 250. And uh, pretty much Bajaj is going to service your bike. So you're not going to have any problem because the parts are the same. The servicing is the same. You don't see any bad stuff coming out of KTM Bajaj. What do you guys think of the vid pillin? Would you get this over a Duke 250? Do let us know in the comments down below. This is your boy Bhavneet. See you in the next one.